Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on working energy. The topic of this video is mechanical energy, and we want to know what is the significance of the term mechanical energy, and how do you determine the total amount of mechanical energy? Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the concept of work. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. One thing we discussed in that video is that work occurs whenever a force is exerted on an object either against the motion or with the motion of that object. Work often changes the amount of energy possessed by that object. It could increase the amount of energy whenever the force is in the direction of motion and positive work is done, and it could decrease the amount of energy possessed by the object when the force goes against the motion and does negative work upon it. I have two examples of work being done on an object to change its energy. In the first example, example, a force is applied by a weightlifter to a barbell in order to lift it up above the weightlifter's head. In this case, that force does work upon the object. It does positive work and increases the gravitational potential energy of the object. In the second example, a force is applied by a pitcher on a baseball to accelerate it from rest to a high speed. This force does work on the baseball and increases the amount of kinetic energy possessed by the baseball. Mechanical energy is the energy possessed by an object as a result of either its motion, or its position, or both. When we think of mechanical energy, we think of it being comprised of two types of energy. First, there's kinetic energy, the energy of motion, and second, there's potential energy, the energy of position. As an example of kinetic energy, consider a moving car. Because it's moving, it has energy of motion, or kinetic energy. This is a form of mechanical energy. As an example of potential energy, consider a weightlifter lifting a barbell above his head. That barbell has gravitational potential energy, a form of mechanical energy. Or think of the bowstring being stretched on an archer's bow. This stretched bowstring possesses elastic potential energy, another form of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is sometimes defined as the ability to do work. Objects that possess mechanical energy have the ability to apply a force to another object to cause it to be displaced or to do work upon that object. As an example of an object with mechanical energy, let's consider the wrecking ball of a demolition machine. That wrecking ball is raised high above the ground, at least above its lowest position, and as such possesses gravitational potential energy, and has the ability to do work. Once released, that wrecking ball begins to swing to its lowest position, losing its gravitational potential energy, but gaining kinetic energy, which gives the wrecking ball the ability to do work due to its motion. Then the wrecking ball hits the side of the building and applies a force to the building to cause it to be displaced inward or dents the building. This is work being done upon that building. That's why we say that objects that have mechanical energy have the ability to do work. Now for the rest of the story. Once that wrecking ball does work upon the building, it probably breaks up the concrete into large chunks that begin to move and fall to the ground. This is a form of kinetic energy. And the building begins to vibrate about a fixed position, maybe even produces a loud sound. This is a form of vibrational energy. And the building probably warms up a little bit, which is a form of thermal energy. Of the three forms mentioned above, Two of these are what we call non-mechanical forms of energy, and we'll discuss those in another video. Any object that possesses mechanical energy, either the kinetic or the potential form, has the ability to do work. For example, consider the moving hammer striking the nail. The hammer has kinetic energy, which gives it the ability to do work upon the nail. It can apply a force to the nail to displace it into the block of wood. Or consider the bowling ball down at the bowling alley. That bowling ball has kinetic energy, which gives it the ability to do work upon the pins when it strikes it. Or consider the compressed springs of a dart gun. Those compressed springs have elastic potential energy, which gives the springs the ability to do work upon the dart once the springs are released. And finally, consider the moving air down at the wind farm. The moving air possesses kinetic energy, which gives it the ability to do work on the blades of the windmill. In all these cases, an object with mechanical energy is doing work upon another object. The total amount of mechanical energy that's possessed by an object is simply the sum of the amount of kinetic and potential energy that that object possesses. In other words, the total mechanical energy, or TME, is equal to the Ke plus the Pe. For this ski jumper that you see in the diagram, you'll notice that it has 50,000 joules of total mechanical energy at the top of the hill, 
all in the form of potential energy. But as it begins to go down the hill, the potential energy begins to decrease, but the kinetic energy begins to increase. At the 60 meter elevation, you'll notice that there is still 50,000 joules of total mechanical energy. And throughout the entire motion, the total amount of mechanical energy is 50,000 joules. Mechanical energy is something that we can keep track of. We can keep track of it because we can make measurements of quantities like mass and speed and height and calculate kinetic and potential energy and thus know the total amount of mechanical energy possessed by an object. Here's another example of an object moving through the air that has mechanical energy. At the very peak of its trajectory, it has seven joules of total mechanical energy, four joules of potential, and three joules of kinetic. But as it drops down to its original height, it still has seven joules of total mechanical energy. It's just changed mostly into kinetic energy. And here's an example of a sledder that starts on top of a hill with 4,500 joules of total mechanical energy. And at the bottom of the hill, it also has 4,500 joules of mechanical energy. Now, mechanical energy is something we can keep track of. And by keeping track of it, we can answer questions like, how high will the baseball go, or how fast will the sledder be moving at the bottom of the hill, or even how far will the sledder skid to skid before it finally coasts to a stop at the bottom of the hill? These are questions that we'll discuss in great detail in future videos. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help me out by giving me a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. We have a Minds on Physics mission on the topic of mechanical energy and a tutorial page that reads much like a book. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.